Okay. Okay, we'll go ahead and call this meeting the order to order, and if you would please stand for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Here. Miller. Here. Tucker. Here. Bonoble. Here. Fleischer. Crane. Here. Michelle's not here, is she? Not yet. Go ahead. Okay. Here. This is Dixon, the student achievement. Wait, you want to come over here? <laughs> I thought some of you have already met with me. She made her way around the table. Um, this is Miss Whitney Steer. Whitney is a senior who has customized her education at Crestview in order to enhance her interests and foster her career goals after high school. She has a clear picture of how she would like her future to develop and has worked very hard to ensure her success. After high school, Whitney plans to attend the Ohio State Agricultural Technical Institute in Worcester to study livestock science with a beef specification and emphasis on animal nutrition. During her junior year, she intends to transfer to main campus to major in agricultural engineering. Currently, she attends the Columbia County Career and Technical Center in the Veterinary Tech Program while taking her academic classes at Crestview, which includes a calculus class to better prepare her for college. Whitney is one of our students. Our students at our half-day career center can take three classes at Crestview, and that fourth class period is transportation to get between the two, but Whitney wanted calculus, which was offered fourth period, so we, we made arrangements with Mr. Bieberheimer, her, her vet tech instructor, so Whitney goes a little bit later. She stays at Crestview one extra period to get calculus. Do you get lunch? Oh, yeah, I get lunch, and <laughs> I take a few classes. So <laughs> she gave up lunch for calculus. Imagine that. Tell Mrs. Sister Top of her class. She's an excellent student. Whitney demonstrates her leadership skills by accepting the office of president of FFA, national FFA state degree, 4-H club president, junior fair board treasurer, and chair of the ribbons committee. She is currently raising a feeder calf and she's cow to show at the fair and has exhibited steer hogs and beef feeders in previous years. Being an active member of 4-H, Whitney participates in numerous community service projects while finding time for a part-time job on the dairy farm. Our students sometimes have a difficult time making it to our board meetings because you know they, they just don't fit into a busy schedule. But I'm so glad that you could come this month because I wanted everybody to meet you. Mm -hmm. I think that's what it's for. I think I made grip with last month. You know what? You know what it was? It was National, National Honor Society at the Career Center. That was their induction. So, yeah. Busy folks. Well, congratulations, yeah. Whitney. And um, who do you have with you? My dad, Scott Steve. <laughs> That's always good things for a dad to Well, I'm also going to be here, but she's not. She's at the end. Uh, Your dad can read that to her when we get home. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Wait, you can have a minute. Mrs. Dixon, we need a picture. Oh. March to work down at the, the Career Center and work in a classroom next to where Whitney is, uh, is located at and her vet tech program. And it's been a pleasure. She is, um, you know, just uh, you're a role model to all the other ones uh, there with, with your ambitions. And uh, 
with your degree at Ohio State, when you finish after four years, what are you looking? What are you, where are you looking to be at? What are you going to do? I, because I'm going for engineering and nutrition. I want to work for like a big, like a big company. Like I've looked at Kalenbach Heath and Carville and different companies like that, and then different like engineering companies like Dairy Progressive and John Deere. And stuff. You have high expectations, and, and uh, I, I hope you meet all those. I hope so too. I, I, know, you, I know you will. I plan on it. Look for great things to happen. Thank you. And thank you. Um, you folks can stay as long as you wish. Um, the building improvement team. We're going to give our building improvement um, presentation. And, um, I would like to introduce um, teachers who may or may not have met them before. This is Mrs. Felicia Joy, and she is our math instructor teaching calculus, math exploration, algebra. Um, Ms. Randy Yazdak is our STEM instructor with middle school and high school. And Mr. Michael Cunningham, who uh, teaches American history and geography. So they will be giving you some of our presentation. Just as a, a, a beginning, we've all seen this. I know you all have copies of our building improvement plan, so we're not going to read through our goals and our strategies. But we're in three main areas, academics, um, school culture, and technology. And this is the finishing up the last year of our three-year cycle with our building improvement plan. So at this point in time, we have spent close to three years on these action steps that have been developed. And so this next school year, we will be rewriting a whole new cycle of building improvement plan. We'll be looking at um, some new directions we want to go. We'll be looking at things that were successful, things that we decided, you know, maybe we don't want to go down that path anymore. So it's going to be a complete and total revamp. So what you're seeing at this time is the very end of a building improvement cycle. And so we're just going to go right ahead and, and get started. Okay, the first area we're going to talk about is school climate. Okay, uh, the main things I'm going to talk about with school climate, uh, the, one of the bigger things is that we implemented the Michael Ross program starting last year. And this year, uh, talking about prevention uh, of bullying and like student leadership and student um, student involvement. Uh, we created these small groups and they were randomly randomly chosen. They were only put together by grade level. Uh, so you had freshmen and routine seniors. Uh, those groups met only a couple times this year, not as much as we had hoped, um, but it was a start. So that's, we feel, an opportunity that we're hoping to build on uh, next year. Another thing is uh, exhibiting our crusty colors and logos. Uh, one just small thing I like to see is, is the lockers. In the, in the high school hallway, you just see, I mean, at the end of the year, they, they get a little bit tattered and worn, but you can see all of the, uh, the groups the kids are in. You see the senior lockers, which the parents do an awesome job with. And it really just, you know, kind of promotes that school spirit. Uh, secondly, one thing that myself I have seen improve, not have, I have not helped as much with, but is the bulletin boards. Uh, the bulletin boards have been uh, more colorful, more information on those. Even just, I saw Mrs. Nappy taking stuff down to put up stuff for mini, mini Relay for Life. So they're not just staying the same all year. It seems like they're, they're changing up. Um, also, one thing is Whitney was here for is our Student of the Month. Mrs. Dixon is always asking for us for suggestions of Student of the Month. Uh, one boy, one girl, and we have those each month uh, updated. I think it just kind of, I have students um, in my fourth period talk, Mrs. Joy, are you going to recommend me for student of the month? You know, students look forward to that. So. So what we hope to do is continue to update those colors in school, revamp the character and bully training. Like I said, I hope, hopefully that's, um, it's been an encouragement because we really took a big step and we want to improve that program as well. Um, one other big thing we hope to look at opportunity for is attendance to a, uh, improve our attendance issues at the high school and also maybe look into an ISS program. I've heard of, there's going to be hurdles with that as well with the ISS program, but hopefully kind of developing something that promotes, you know, better discipline in our classrooms. I will say as a detention monitor, we went from half hour 
um, in school detentions after school to two hour and four hour. And I will say, I just knowing from last year, those numbers have decreased, and I think the students are taking it very seriously. Uh, they don't like to just have to sit there and not speak for two hours. I, I'm, I'm normally doing the four hours in. I had a, he had, I had a student who said, Mrs. Joy, can I just stand up and walk around the room? He said, I am miserable. I said, you can walk around, I said, but you're not leaving. So uh, we get them to do look, their work as long as we can, um, but they're not enjoying it. So hopefully that's an improvement towards our discipline as well. All right, technology. So our goal for the past three years has been to become more of a paperless school. So we can be 15% of paperless, or with paper, 85% technology based. And we've done a lot of work recently. We have a lot of professional development with the staff. Um, at every one of our staff meetings, we show, we have one staff member show something that they learned to do with technology. And I think that's really helped all of us because we to see how other teachers implement it. And we've done full day professional development on the technology and how to use the netbooks to their full potential. Um, we're looking to obtain grants. I personally have a grant in STEM. We have a grant for our 3D software. English has grants, technology has grants, and we did a program called Quality Matters this year. I think all of us were a part of Quality yeah. Matters. Yeah, all three of us. Um, and it is to show us how to improve online instruction, so how to make your online, for us, Moodle page easier for kids. And we're looking to add more instructional support. Kathy Bennett has been a great resource for us this year. She's helped a lot of teachers out. And um, Daryl, of course, is always going to help us as well. <laughs> we have implemented one-to-one -one initiatives. So every student has a netbook. Uh, we went through a lot of issues with those last year. I think this year they're, they're going so much better. I see all the students using them in classes. We are trying to be as paperless as possible. We understand we probably will never get to be 100% paperless. There's just some things that we do on paper. Math, for example, is one of them. <laughs> But we are trying to be as paperless as possible and not useful. And we're trying to develop more projects based on technology. So Mrs. Joy has a math exploration course that's based on technology. My STEM courses are based on technology. You guys have seen um, the 3D models that we've made, so that's all technology based as well. Going forward, we always could do more. There can always be more professional development. We can always push people to do more with technology. And we're going to continue to use Moodle more and use it to its full potential to work on paperless classrooms. Okay. <laughs> I get to move around finally. It's just keep me standing in one spot. Uh, I'm going to focus on academics. Uh, just what we talked, you know, what, what, some of our goals this year was focusing on how can we get the graduation rate to increase by 1%. Um, and what are some other things we could do just to get kids more dialed in with what's going on in the classroom? So here's some of the things that we've kind of come up with. Um, currently our English department is coming up with a way. We know that writing in our, uh, is one of our weakest areas in the school. So what was our English department is looking at a way that how across the board, across the curriculum, can we all together come together and write and, and have a consistent writing agreement? for the students. And so that way we're all grading the same way, we're all looking at it the same way, and with the fact that the OGT is probably not going away for the next few years, uh, you have extended response questions on the OGT that these sophomores have to answer. Sometimes they're two-point questions, sometimes they're four-point questions, and our kids have a hard time doing that. So with the English department, all the departments are going to come together, we're going to figure out how can we boost this up and, and turn this into um, a, a bigger positive and, and increase the writing across uh, for all the across the board for math and technology and social studies. Um, another thing we've done is with the English, uh, we've added ebooks this year. Social studies also has an ebook. We were able to get that on there. Been a blessing for me because I don't have to drag out the textbooks. I can just put up, I just throw up the chapters of the sections I want the kids to look at on Moodle. If we need to do anything with reading, I don't have to drag out any paper, I don't have to print anything. It's fantastic. So science is going to be getting new e-books uh, here pretty soon, so hopefully they'll be able to be doing the same thing. Oh, let's see what else we got here. Um, activity period. Activity period Wednesday morning has been a great time for students uh, to kind of catch up on work if they fell behind, so they missed something, they missed a test, a quiz. A perfect opportunity for them to come into a classroom, make that up. Other times if students are struggling, teachers can call students in and be able to you know, like, come here, camp out of my desk for a few minutes, let's kind of rehash some things, go over some things. So it's been, it's been great. 
to be able to have that time with students to give that little extra nudge or to make up anything uh, that they need to do. I mean, so students here are so involved in things. And sometimes it's really tough to get a student to come in before school or after school. And so activity period really helps out with that and being able to have students come in and make up stuff. Um, I was not involved in this, but a bunch of the teachers here worked on FIP this year, which is formative instructional practice. It's just different ways. How can we get things together, say like um, content standards, learning targets. So that way, for example, you know, I use learning targets already, and it's basically when the kids come into my classroom that day, they've got a learning target that they need to hit by the end of class. And we do a little assessment to see, do those students, have they, did they meet that assessment? You know, did they hit that target or not? And what do we need to do to make sure that the students who did got it, keep it, and the students who didn't get it, how can we get them to make sure that they got it? So different ways that you can get that in there. We've been doing, working on getting the students more involved in analyzing their own learning, not just us shoving it and spoon feeding them, but how are they figuring out that they got it or not? So there's been a lot of good stuff, positive things that the teachers have been working through that. Um, so you can see we have a host of different ways that we've been working on that. Um, big things that we've been doing with content standards and getting the new state standards all aligned in classrooms and making sure everybody's got content standards that they're working towards. Uh, one big area opportunity for the school is working on college readiness. Um, we, you know, we talked about how one thing we implemented this year was having a pre-assessment at the beginning of the year and a post-assessment at the big end of the year to measure student growth. Okay, from the beginning of the year till now. How have these students learned? What have they learned? How have they grown? And you know, for kids going off to school, I mean, we've all been in college classes. We know, you show up to school, you're asked to read 10 chapters in one week, you've got a test on it, it's all on your own. Oh, by the way, your grade is based on a midterm and a final. And so, that kind of hits kids hard when they leave here. And so, you know, that's an opportunity for us to move forward as we keep working on that. And in fact, that is one of our opportunities, is to continue to develop this whole idea of um, looking at a post-test and a pre-test and you know, maybe even throwing a midterm in different aspects for, for assessing student growth. A um, couple things we worked on, we tried a study skills class the last couple years for ninth graders. Part of the reason to do this was to get kids into music appreciation. Let's see if we can pull kids into choir, into band. Didn't quite work, so we're putting a pause on that and kind of thinking, okay, what can we do to make this better going forward? Uh, kind of help the freshmen make that transition from middle school to high school. That's such a huge change for them. And so what can we do to make that transition a lot smoother? So we're going to keep looking at that and see what we can come up with. I might be done. Take okay. Done. All right. Any questions from you guys about anything you've seen here? Uh, how much time do you uh, put in as a team? So on staff or as a building improvement? You're building improvement. Our goal is we normally meet monthly. I mean, already we've met three times in the last week and a half. Yeah. So I just stay on a project. If we've got a project, yeah. then it's more often that. And we've done like small group things too. Like mm -hmm. Clay is going to be worked on one part and they work on a different part. And we've got small groups as well. This isn't all of our building improvement team. Yeah, there's a bunch of work. In the mornings, in the activities time in the morning, um, is there a chance, I know they can catch up with their, their work and whatnot, is there also an opportunity for them to get with a, uh, an expert on whatever it might be, their math or their English or whatever they... Yeah, it's also a time for two rooms, so if a student is having is struggling in my course, I'm available, you know, at that time. If a student's taking a test, you know, I can be at my desk, and if a student comes in, that's what I'm there for them mm -hmm. during that time, is to help them to improve whatever they're, they're lacking. Okay. I have a question, it's probably more of a comment, but some of the two things you said there, the college readiness and writing. Um, one of the things I guess I would like to see for in being somebody who evaluates a lot of these high school scholarships, mm -hmm. we don't do very good on their scholarships. Yes. <laughs> our, our, our writing is not good. Yes. Um, you know, it would almost be like a, nice to have a one-day seminar, and, it, and you know, I mean, I know that you, you can't do that all day, but you know, for these seniors, sometime in that first couple of weeks, it would pay them dividends because you know, folks are asking for money, and, and, and I mean, that's not even credit to you. It's, it's you know, 
all of those words. Yeah, oh, definitely. It's across the board, yeah. High school students don't do good at it. So we figure if we intensify things a little bit, that they're going to have writing in many different venues. They're going to see what it's like to write about art, which is going to be a different type of writing than maybe they're going to write about in science class, which is more factual. And, and in math class, in the math exploration class that, that Mrs. Joy teaches, that's research-based. So, you know, you, you're doing a lot of research writing, typewriting there. So, you know, it, it, it's never going to hurt them. The more they write, it's only going to be a positive. You now, on our OGT scores, we are, we're always up there, one of the top in the county. But we never get that highest level. Never. We never get that highest level of students. Our students are, you know, here. And mediocrity isn't good enough. So we've got to step it up a little bit. And you're right. And eventually it will reflect. And, and the, why we're saying this, where, no matter where it is in the curriculum, the same style. You know, a paragraph has to have a certain structure. So that everybody has the same expectations. You know, source, citing your sources has to be a certain way. And if everybody across the curriculum has that same expectation, then it's going to be less confusing for the students and hopefully, you know, bump up the rigor. Yeah, because you imagine it's a student coming in and saying, you know, okay, in math, we're going to be writing, and so you've got one set of standards. You come into my class in social studies, there's a whole other set of standards for writing. That's going to be so hard for the kids to sit there and come in and be like, okay, what does this teacher want? What is this teacher looking for? And so I think that's why I love what the English department is doing, is to be able to say, okay, across the board, let's look at these things. So the kids know every single teacher is looking at this. And I think that's going to be a huge payoff. They're not going to like it. <laughs> They're not going to like it, but... <laughs> They're not going to Yeah. I think too much of their writing is based on text messaging and uh, quick response. You know, I think they're, they've they've grown up with the technology, so if you can't type it on with your thumbs, you probably don't know how to do it. Yeah. When you talk about assessments, uh, the pre and the post tests, the uh, SLOs. Yes. Okay. Yes, that's what's involved there. Okay. So you're pulling out the main points and then right. going to Bloom's taxonomy and in a way, you know, yeah. for to, to use you know this example of, of for social studies, like their pretest, it's over their pre-assessment they get at the beginning of the year is over everything we talk about for the entire year. So they get measured on to see, okay, you know, what level am I working with with students? I'm you know probably going to have. If a typical if a typical pattern comes out, I should have 90% very low with just a 10% probably a little high because you'll have some kids who are very interested in history who probably know a lot walking in. That's just typical. Um, by the post assessment, I actually this year was able to change my SLO target numbers a little bit because the students scored a little higher than I expected, and so which I'm looking forward to because I feel like now like next year I can use those numbers to tighten up a lot of things. But uh, that it was, it was interesting to see the students approach that last, that post-assessment. Because I just sit there and remind them, well, you guys already did this at the beginning of the year. Now you're just seeing how much you've grown, how much you know. I mean, it's, it's a tough sell, but once the kids start thinking like, and you show it, you know, a lot of them when I showed them the score, I said, you were here and now you're here. And a lot of them were like, Wow, I mean, I actually like retained all that. <laughs> you know, it was a shock to them, but it was a good shock. A lot of them were, had very positive reception to it to realize, like, okay, well, I I grew, and I think once we keep getting that in the kids' heads, I think that'll just become more and more positive to them to say, like, okay, wow, I I am learning stuff. And so I think it's just once we get that culture built in, you know, you'll, right. you'll see it. So it's just a matter of fine tuning it and just getting what we can. Very good. Any other questions? We certainly appreciate you taking the time to come in and, and make a presentation and appreciate what you do. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. We appreciate Randy putting all the hard work into Randy putting did. this together. She did a fantastic Randy job. Did.
consent agenda. We have a copy of the items considered for tonight's consent agenda. Would any board member wish to remove any item to be considered separately? Yes, Mr. President, number four, please. Any others? Mr. President, I would like to uh, exempt item number 13. Any others? And I would also wish to remove number five. Any others? If not, is there a motion to accept? So moved. Dave, second? Second. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, we should proceed to vote. Charlene, roll please. Miller? Yes. Tucker? Yes. Weikert? Yes. Bonagle? Yes. Garland? Yes. Okay, let's go back and, and uh, we will open up uh, number four. Is there a motion to accept? I make a motion to accept. I'll second. Ready to second. Any discussion? Hearing none, we shall proceed to vote. Charlene? No. Abstain. Honorable? Yes. Tucker? Yes. Whitey? Yes. Carver? Yes. Number five. Is there a motion to accept? So moved. Is there a second? <coughs> second. Any discussion? Hearing none, we should proceed to vote. Charlene, the roll, please. Tucker? Yes. Whitey? Yes. Thirteen. Five. Five. Oh, I'm sorry. I wrote thirteen. That's five games. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I started to pucker up for a minute. <laughs> <laughs> I have no screen here, so I'm kind of about to see my That's beer. okay. Um, Bonhoeffel? Yes. Miller? Yeah. Garway? Abstain. Number thirteen. Is there a motion to accept? I'll make the motion. Brayden, is there a second? Second. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, we should proceed to vote. Charlene? Miller? Yes. Weikert? Epstein. Bonnacle? Yes. Tucker? Yes. Garland? Epstein. Yeah, I apologize. <laughs> Um, treasurer's request and recommendation is not included in the consent agenda. Item number one, I'd like to request the board approve the financial reports and investments as prepared and presented. Is there a motion to accept? So moved. Second? Second. Uh, any discussion? Um, yeah, th this is for the five year? No. Not yet, okay, okay. That was under the consent. That was under consent. We got it. Okay. Hearing, hearing none, we should proceed to vote. Charlene? Tucker? Yes. Weicker? Yes. Miller? Yes. Bonnacle? Yes. Carver? Yes. Item number two, I would like to request the board to accept the donations as listed there on the agenda. There are several. So moved. So moved. Um, second? Second. Dave, any discussion? Um, as you can see, the football program is... Um, Trying to raise donations for banners. That's why there's several listed banners. What would type of banners? To go around the football field. You're going to hang them on the fence, like soccer does. Oh, okay. Baseball. Is that too late to? Nope. They're no. going to leave it open all through the summer, I believe. So we just have to contact Mr. Hughes. Very good. Um, any other discussion? We should proceed to vote. Charlene? Miller? Yes. Tucker? Yes. Bonnable? Yes. Liker? Yes. Carver. Yes. Um, so Herman Miller is, had to uh, go to a meeting in Columbus today. He anticipates he'll be back before the end of the board meeting. So we'll hold off on race to the top and see if he comes in. If not, I'll try to provide that, that report later. <coughs> okay. With that being said, uh, board reports, uh, Career Center, Mr. Tucker. Yes, sir. 
<coughs> we had Mrs. Kelly Dorney, which I can guess is a Crestview graduate, and she brought a seminar. She is in charge of the adult education. She's the adult educational director there, and she presented information to the Board of Education regarding the adult um, education curricula. And Mrs. Dorney shared continuous improvement plan for the adult um, education, which is planned. Uh, includes goal one to excel the student performance, goal two to build a strong and positive relationship among students, community members, employees, stakeholders, and such. Uh, goal three to excel in staff performance, and goal four develop and maintain district culture that supports that supports the adult education core values. Mrs. Darney also shared the following seven main areas of study for the adult programming, which is practical nursing, welding, pharmacy technician, EMT, patient care technician, medical office technology, and nurses' aid. Short meeting. It's a good one. Yeah. A any questions? Dr. Miller. Okay, this, excuse me, this month's um, student achievement research brief was on <coughs> allergies. No, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Flipping of classrooms. Um, basically, what a flipped classroom is is where uh, students watch the um, lecture at home and then do work or other enrichment activities in the classroom. When we were in Columbus this uh, past year for the um, board meeting, uh, I actually went to a, one of the seminars I went was on the flipped classroom. It was actually pretty interesting. Um, but basically, you know, they talk about some of the challenges of flipping the classroom. You know, whether kids have internet access at home, whether they have the technology at home, and the various ways um, to combat that, you know, um, including, you know, possibly letting kids go into the computer labs um, before or after school, um, letting them watch them on their mobile devices, uh, their home computers, or, you know, potentially having several DVDs burnt of, of the lectures that they could watch. Um, you know, they talked about the impact of a flipped classroom. Well, there, there hasn't been a well-randomized scientific study. It has been shown in a non-scientific, uh, of a survey of 453 teachers who flipped their classrooms. Um, about two-thirds said that their test scores increased. Um, you know, they said there's particular benefits for students in AP courses and students with special needs. 80% um, said that student attitudes were better, and 99% said that they would flip them again next year. And there was a specific incident cited at uh, Clintondale High School in Michigan saw that the failure rate of their ninth grade math students dropped from 44 to 13% um, by after adopting flipped classrooms. Uh, you know, just on a side note, some of the things that I, they talked about that in Columbus is if you eventually had a lot of the lectures uh, cataloged, you know, you could potentially almost let certain <coughs> classes be um, potentially student driven at the pace that they worked at, kind of thing. Um, and, you know, you could go on and, you know, if something, therefore, you know, when you're looking at increasing scores and challenging certain students, it, it was a little easier to, that, to do that. Um, you know, the teacher liked it because, you know, especially if they're proceeding at different levels, you know, you're not lecturing and worrying about, okay, am I getting it? You know, is, is Ed Miller falling behind? You know, am I more impressed? And where everybody saw it, you could watch it multiple times. Um, but then, you know, we, when we came to work, you know, I may be having a problem with this aspect, and he may be having a problem with different, but then you had 40 minutes to work those out rather than, you know, just covering the lecture and having to work on those at home. Now, there's certainly some, some challenges to it as well, you know, the, the availability of the technology and um, things like that. How close is anybody around here? <clears throat> um, the, this 
Now I talked to I don't want to put him on the spot. I talked to Daryl and um, he he was saying he was presenting some things down there about that, right? About we were talking about that flip classroom when I talked to you after that when we were in Columbus. I mean, you know, potentially I don't know that anybody here is doing it. We we've got some that are going partial. Yeah, I wouldn't say they're doing class, yes, full a full flip at this point, but we've got some that are starting that process. Else? That's it. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Tucker. Mr. Weicker. There's a lot going on at the legislative uh, level. However, I'll kind of key on a couple of interesting things. Uh, Congress' attempt to expand charter schools. Um, uh, the National School Board Association, uh, the leading advocate for public education, uh, representing more than 90,000 local school members board members as opposed to HR 10, the Success and Opportunity Through Quality Charter Schools Act, which is scheduled for a floor vote this week. Uh, basically, uh, they are uh, this, uh, the theme of which is the decisions regarding charter schools should rest with the state and local school boards, not federal lawmakers, the NSBA contends. Uh, charter schools, absent school board oversight, have far less accountability, and there's uh, this theme will, will uh, transfer over into another uh, bill that's, uh, that's coming up here I'll talk about in a minute. <clears throat> Charter schools absent lo local school board oversight have far less accountability for student achievement than traditional public schools. Uh, further uh, states that uh, the false idea that charter schools are the uh, panacea for for education reform, which in fact research indicates that the vast majority of charter schools do not outperform traditional public schools. Uh, in fact, in this other article, uh, they were uh, they they cited some research that uh, that said that the, the the schools that a lot of these students are coming from the local school districts that a lot of these these students are coming from. Uh, as they go to the charter schools, the school to which they came from have performed much better than what the schools that they went to the charter school at. Uh, while the number of charter schools across the nation has risen, data indicates that just one in five charter schools outperform public schools in reading and math assessments. So that's, uh, I don't know if they voted on that yet, however, that is up for floor, floor vote this, this. What's the consensus on that? Uh, I'm not 100% sure. My guess is that it's in Congress. If Congress passes legislation to help states and local communities improve the quality of their public schools, absent federal intrusion, we applaud it. Uh, and I, I think that's the theme that you know that we should have more local input, uh, and the federal government should not be actually uh, involved in it as, as much. But as with everything else, I think you'll see it pass the Senate and or pass the House and be held up in the Senate. Um, in that same vein, charter school transparency. Now we went through a, a, a little um, exercise about a month or two ago with um, uh, public records. Um, and I know several different newspapers came and asked a series of questions about what what uh, information they could glean from different schools around the area. And it was actually a, an enlightening uh, Enlightening exercise. Charter school transparency accountability legislation introduced. Uh, Mayor or uh, Joe Schiavone, not Mayor Schiavone. Joe Schiavone introduced Senate Bill 329, which require Ohio community charter schools to be more accountable and transparent. The proposed legislation calls for requiring non-public operators and non-public sponsors of charter schools to comply with public records public record laws that deal with management and sponsorship of the schools, requiring charter schools to establish a public records commission and public records retention schedule as traditional public schools are required to, and requiring the state auditor to annually audit each charter school operator and charter school sponsor covering only public funds for non-public operators or sponsors. So I think the theme of this is that they are need to be a lot more accountable than what they've held, uh, been held to uh, at this point. Uh, Representative John Patrick Carney, uh, Democrat, from, uh, Democrat from Columbus, also plans to introduce a companion bill in the House, which will cover uh, uh, 
just about the same type of, of things. So that's those two themes are uh, public school, public school accountability, public or uh, charter school funding, so on and so forth. Uh, the third uh, bill I'd like to talk about is the OEA, uh, Education Association, calls for suspension of state achievement tests. I know there's been a lot of talk about uh, state achievement tests and and, uh, and that sort of thing. Nearly 1,000 education leaders from the schools throughout the state gathered Friday and Saturday at Ohio Education uh, Spring Representative Assembly in Columbus. Uh, and basically what they... Uh, want to do is uh, propose legislation that would hit the pause button on all state imposed high stakes decision based on student test results in the implementation of Ohio's new learning standards. Uh, so I think they are talking about delay and I know uh, several of us attended one of the sessions with uh, Peggy Lehner. Uh, she is proposing a delay, however it's not the three year delay that uh, has been suggested by the OEA. I think it's more of a two year. I think she's looking more for a two year delay in implementation of these different things, of these different testings. Uh, and that's on the park. You know, that's not the current achievement test we're giving. That's the park. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Basically, it'll give a chance to kind of catch up on on uh, the curriculum and aligning the curriculum with the park testing. So anyways, um, that's kind of the theme of that. So yeah, a lot of things going on. Uh, we may yet see some uh, some delays in the uh, in the uh, high stakes testing. So. I appreciate that. Um, what, what about the teacher evaluation? Uh, is there a bill pending on that on the percentage? There is, but it hasn't gone anywhere, and we're operating under the current 50%. At some point, it was supposed to go to 30. It was supposed to have dropped down at one time to 35, and then at one time clear down to 30, but it hasn't hasn't passed. That would that would make a difference. Pardon, pardon. Pardon. Is an argument pardon at 50%? Is that right? Yeah. So even if it changed. Okay, well, thank you, Mr. Certainly. <coughs> Mr. Straney. Seniors last week. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, that's what's going on right now. I mean, we have uh, we had our Day of Hope, which went really well. Uh, great turnout. Most students I've seen there for a long time. Uh, our mini Relay for Life is tomorrow, I think. Hmm. Uh, we'll probably move it inside for the morning at least. Uh, and the senior's last day is Friday, so. You're not counting though, are you? Absolutely. <laughs> We've been counting since day one. <laughs> and I'm just going to tell Some of the projects you've worked on. How's, that, how's everything going? I, uh, I submitted my paperwork, I don't know. Sorry to tell us this, but it's been kind of hard to paint anything the ground being so wet as well, so I really got to do that. Ordered those. I don't know if they ever They just made. haven't shipped yet. His, his water thing, they never shipped yet, did they? Well, I Yeah. But they are ordered, so. Hopefully they'll come in over the summer and be ready to go. Fortunately, we won't be able to. I'll be here, so okay. bring me a water bottle back. <laughs> <laughs> Are you coming back? Are you coming back? So I'm working here this summer. Again. No, 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 I mean school. Yeah, <laughs> I hope not. <laughs> you. You'll be here. You'll be here next month, correct? Yes. Okay. Very good. Anything else? Good. All right. Well, thank you. Um, Board committee reports, buildings wanna, and grounds. Mr. Bono. Do you want to skip the race to the top since Herman's here? I'm sorry, Herman, you were so quiet coming in, I didn't hear you. If you would like to take the stage, please. Well, it's occasionally been set on selfie for a big guy, but uh, I don't know about quietly entering. Uh, actually, I just came back from uh, Columbus. I uh, just got back a little bit ago. We were uh, today, our, uh, our was our presentation to the uh, FAMS uh, committee and 
the other schools participating in the cohorts two and three. Um, so the uh, math uh, section at the language arts was down yesterday uh, and did their presentation. We did ours today. And so maybe uh, I know our math coach at an appropriate time might want to share that with you. Um, it pushes about 25 minutes, so it might be one that we want to do on separate nights rather than double up. Uh, you know, so I know she's probably going to have to talk to you about the possibility of Susie Turner about maybe doing that so you can see some of the things that your uh, middle school instructors have done through formative assessment in middle school. Um, that is uh, the second year of that and coming to a close. And I guess uh, while they'll still be working at some of the uh, filing of that information and putting it on website and making resources available to other teachers around the state, including the videos that we uh, put together, PowerPoints we put together as resources for teachers. Uh, it's an appropriate time to talk about uh, the close of uh, Race to the Top. Well, first of all, how was it received? Uh, it went fine. Uh, we, uh, we had a group of about 20, 25 uh, teachers from other school districts were there. Um, it went it went well. We had uh, we had dubbed ourselves the Fantastic Four, uh, and it uh, went uh, had a little logo going and stuff. So uh, it went over pretty well. Um, our kids did a good job of participating, and that certainly makes the the thing go. You can talk about all the things you want, but you have to have willing bodies to uh, carry it out. Um, but as we, so as we talk about the, clo the close of uh, Race to the Top, I know Mr. Dilling has shared with you that the, we started this in 2010 with me coming to me and sharing with you initiatives and programs that we've been trying to put in place to reformulate how we think about educating our students, how we're uh, evaluating their progress as we work towards uh, some of evaluation, but doing those in in checkup in evaluations in between. Uh, so at this uh, time, uh, I guess you know, that's starting in 2010, we're at the end of the fourth year. And as Mr. Dillian mentioned, uh, they've opened up the option for support for, through another year uh, with no additional funding, uh, but saying that as far as resource goes, as far as support staff goes, that they would still continue to do that, and we've, we've signed on to do that with really basically saying, uh, let's keep growing what we've started, and uh, essentially with uh, you know uh, the uh, support of the uh, race of the top personnel, uh, Kathy Nolan and Ivan Wilson, who I think you're meeting with uh, tomorrow, maybe? Or, right. Yeah. Yes. So, uh, I guess I would just say to you, you know, I felt like we've always had a good communication between our uh, board, our administration, and our teaching staff, um, and this is an extension of that. It's one of the things that uh, Ivan Wilson and others who were regional people involved with Race of the Top said they really admired. I know Mr. Weikert, you were at the one meeting that he was present at and the fact that there was a board member present at that meeting was new to him. Uh, and I think that we have some unique communication things that happen in that regard here at Crestview. So I guess I would offer to you that uh, while Race to the Top comes to the close, and I'm not looking for another place to be every evening, if you would want me to continue to come uh, and basically give you a five minute you know, uh, rundown of where we're at on the progress we're making on these initiatives and programs, I would be willing to continue to do that. And so you can let me know. Through Mr. Dilling, uh, if you would like to continue to have these five minutes just to kind of check up and be able to ask questions, uh, I'm willing to do that from our standpoint uh, as the uh, teaching staff here at Crestview. Um, I think you, you know, again, just as an opportunity to hear some of the things. And like I said, seeing the, uh, the video presentations really give you an idea of some of the things that people are doing in classrooms to try and reach kids and make sure that they're getting the instruction that's taking place. Um, just to summarize on race to the top stuff a little bit. Um, you know, I think the key thing is you heard Mr. Dilling talking about, and you, I heard you over talking, uh, speaking about legislative, you know, initiatives and pushes and uh, proposals about delaying, uh, you know, park and as they work on some of the logistics of the uh, tests and all those kind of things. But the, the one part that's there is the, uh, you know, what really now has been titled Ohio's New Learning Standards. That's the official title for what people were, you know, t calling the Common Core. Essentially, We've had these academic content standards. We've had standards since probably as long as uh, you can probably remember. Mr. Billing, you've been in education a little longer than me, uh, but uh, I'd assume that th there has always been some standardization, and, th and that's where this is really at. Uh, you know, it, as I mentioned before, it's a delicate balance. Uh, you want to have both autonomy as a classroom teacher, autonomy as a local school district to make decisions that are beneficial to your students. Uh, at the same time, uh, I use this word with my uh, senior Sunday school class so much. It's so important to have a tether to keep you in check. You know, and I think that word's really valuable as we think about how we make decisions on educating people. Uh, that, you know, it, what sounds good in a small group of people can start to sound good to those people and people start nodding their head and going, well, that sounds right. But the tether from outside is when you have accountability to something bigger than yourself, 
It can be restricting at times. It can make decisions sometimes you don't agree with. And I hear this a lot as people talk about government and all kinds of things. But in the end, uh, there needs to be that larger, bigger than you thing that kind of keeps you on the right path. Um, and you know, it, it's not giving up control. Of, teachers here are still making good decisions about what kids are learning and not learning, and where they need interventions and where they need enrichments. Uh, these are happening every day. Uh, so I, I guess in thinking about that, I wanted you to be assured that as we look at Ohio's new lear learning standards, which is really a skinning down of standards by grade level, so that we get rid of overlaps eliminate gaps and educate kids to be able to uh, perform not just at a state test here in eighth grade. I mean, I, my kids took it last week. They took their math section last Wednesday, a week ago today. Um, and, you know, at no point this year did I say, okay, on that date, May 7th, Wednesday, the math test will happen. We'll be done. Uh, at that point, it was more about telling them, and now is when we continue your path to readiness for high school. You know what I mean? And for the next level. And being able to give yourself options in your studies so that you can uh, choose trade schools, so you can choose professions, so you can choose military options, college options, whatever your yeah, decision is going to be. Um, but don't paint yourself in the corner as a 13 or 14 year old with uh, you know, limiting the, what you've learned and what skills you can take to high school. So we'll go back to work as they were at work with my son today. We'll go back to work again tomorrow and we'll continue to do that as for whatever days we're sitting in class uh, between now and the 29th. Um, and I, I think that's those decision uh, making things are what a lot of teachers are looking at. You know, doing the right things for kids and, and trying to make uh, solid decisions. So the, the STEM program, the uh, you know, high school to higher ed, a lot of the things I've mentioned to you, those are going to continue to go on and we've just basically agreed that we're going to continue to support them. Um, really at this point I don't know that there's really any big financial commitment to do that as much as just energy and effort. And those are things that we can always uh, continue to give and work hard at. Uh, so, Mr. Dillon, unless I've forgotten something. No, I, I think what Herman's saying is true. I think that the whole idea of race to the top is it's given us a, a head start on preparing for all of these initiatives that are coming. And, uh, our staff has embraced it and, and moved forward with it. And in all cases, from FAMS to high school to higher ed, they're wanting to continue the work that they've started so that we can be prepared for all of these initiatives as they go into place, whether it be next year or two years from now. I think they're coming, and we need to be prepared for that. And I think, uh, as Herman just mentioned, that's what this is all about as far as race to the top. Yeah, I mean, just to piggyback real quick on that, uh, you know, I had a, a section of class that includes uh, uh, Mr. Miller's uh, daughter, Cassidy, that did the performance-based assessment part, uh, an online pilot, about a month and a half or two ago uh, that they did. Uh, and we asked that group to do that and pilot it, and that gave uh, our tech coordinators some valuable input and insight as to what kind of challenges and successes we were having with our infrastructure technology-wise. That was pretty important to do, to have a realistic idea of what you can support. And you know, When you talk about a group of 25 students versus a grade level of 100 students all simultaneously logged on, and, you know, what, what setup works? Can you do it wireless or does it need to be in a hardwired lab? All these are things that I know that he's considered as he's you know, working this out. And uh, we're going to ask uh, one, one more of my great sections. Uh, the the uh, second trial pilot on this is the uh, EOY end of the year exam. And I actually was at the Common Core meeting yesterday morning at the ESC and I worked the non catheter part of it. I didn't get to finish the other one. I did the 19 questions. It's not that long. It's about 19 questions. I, I did that and experienced it the way they would as far as the manipulatives you can pull up. Uh, there's for the catheter portion, there's a pop-up catheter that comes on the screen. There's, there's technology things I think adults are worried about, but in all of you that have kids or grandkids, you see that they're not intimidated by the stuff at all. Because the thing that they lack is the fear of breaking it. You know what I mean? Adults are worried about they're going to screw something up it's going to explode on them. Kids just do it. You know what I mean? Because they're not worried about breaking They know it's an electronic instrument and it can be reset. <laughs> But uh, adults don't operate under the same principle because they're the one paying for it. Uh, so, uh, in short, I think you'll find that students often aren't intimidated by the manipulation of a ruler, or a protractor, or an item on there, or going and getting a tool and bringing it down, dragging and dropping. They are not nearly uh, as intimidated as the people who are trying to deliver the instruction are. And I'm, I'm just saying that as a teacher because you worry about it in hampering performance. Uh, it comes naturally with our mindset. But uh, giving them the experience can only benefit them. Uh, online testing is probably in their future moving ahead uh, through high school to college at some point. So uh, we can't do anything but think we're benefiting our students by giving them the experience. 
Anything else I could answer for you? Thanks, Mr. Miller. Appreciate that. And as far as coming back to the board, I I don't think anybody would have an objection. Uh, I think it's imperative, at least for another year, because we're moving forward with race to the top, and I, all of these initiatives are going to continue to play. Uh, the high school to higher ed alignment program has already decided they're meeting over the summer, even though there's no stipend involved. They're just wanting to meet. Uh, to finish the work and to continue the work that they've already started. BAMS has a lot of things in place. I'd like to see how they're going to play out as they implement them in the future. We've talked about FIP and uh, you know, hopefully we'll be able to see that come back in our building improvement teams next year. You've already heard from STEM and seen some of the things that's happened there. So all of these initiatives are still important to us and as we move forward I think that we need to continue to monitor our progress. And this just gives you an opportunity on a monthly basis to see what's happening with, with uh, all of these initiatives as we go forward. Yeah, and like I said, those, those video presentations might be good for us to pick a light night where you don't have a lot of agenda items and it would be like a 20, 25 minute uh, thing you could, you could check out uh, of your teachers and some video clips of students and things that are happening in classrooms. Uh, those would be good, good things for you to see, but we just pick it wisely. It doesn't have to be anytime soon. It could just be worked in where it fit best. Okay. Appreciate your efforts there reporting. Okay. Thanks, Thank folks. you. Buildings and grounds, Mr. Vulnerable. <coughs> a meeting last Wednesday morning, and uh, one of the items on the agenda was an update on the boilers. Number two, the boiler is still out for repairs, and uh, the uh, the party that's doing the repairs um, had requested that we cost share in the repair and uh, so we discussed that and um, it's one of those things that uh, for right now we're going to just kind of take a wait and see and see if that issue comes up again and deal with it. it uh, as, as we discussed it's a very complicated matter and um, there there is merit to cost sharing if it would avoid type of litigation and so forth, which, as we all know, would get very expensive very quickly. So um, we just kind of take a wait and see approach there. Um, the filter system that was loaned to us uh, seems to be working quite well. Jay says that every time he checks the filter, there's less uh, deposits in the filter. So. That's, uh, that's good to hear, and plus, hopefully, um, maybe that will end up possibly being the saving grace on boiler number three, perhaps. And also, in the future, down the road, um, greatly extend the life of the number one, number two boiler when you get back in service. Um, also discussed out in the bus garage and undercarriage washing unit. Uh, it's about $5,000 installed. That uh, particular item, I'll just pass a little catalog cut around there. Seems like a, a good way to uh, kind of help uh, maintain the buses by getting rid of the salt and the spray on the undercarriage. So I think, uh, you know, Basically, our recommendation is to proceed with the purchase of that. And um, new bus, we you know have one right now. That's has it been delivered yet? Delivered today. Okay. Uh, but now we're looking at you know another second new bus. So basically, the need the state term pricing. So essentially, the cost of the new bus, the second new bus, if you will would be the same as, pretty much the same as what we're dealing with right now. So, uh, there again, you know, we got to keep looking at updating the bus fleet. And uh, can't afford to, you know, have let that go by the wayside and not deal with keeping our bus fleet up to date. 
Also talked about a uh, thermal scan of the flat roof <coughs> and um, a couple areas where the flat roof is. You know, periodically we have some leaks and <coughs> for uh, $1,350, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> a company will come in, do a thermal scan, and they'll identify any uh, moisture areas. So it would, would kind of help with an assessment of, you know, doing some repairs and, and that sort of thing. Um, there's a possibility that at some point in the future, <coughs> we may want to look at a more long-term situation on that flat roof. I don't, maybe I'm part of it, but... Um, I don't think we're going to be able to put a pitched roof on all of it just because of all the various roof lines around it. Because um, if you end up with a couple valleys, you know, a valley, you kind of just end up with a, a different problem. But uh, there are some some possibilities we discussed for some options to maybe improve the situation a little bit for a more long-term uh, situation. Then we also talked about sidewalk grinding. Uh, there's some areas I think we mentioned before that, uh, you know, over the winter with the deep freeze we had, and some frost heave, and uh, so some of those areas with tripping hazards. When Jay has a company that had done some grinding in the past, and it's going to have them come in and do some grinding. I mean, from an aesthetics point, yeah, it's going to change the the physical appearance of those areas they ground because you're going to expose the aggregate, you know, so you're going to, but, you know, it's, it's better to take care of the tripping hazard and if it doesn't quite match, you know, some of the rest, so be it, at least you get rid of the tripping hazard. So no way it's going to lay back down? No. It's doubtful, you know, usually when stuff like that heaves up, it, it's pretty unlikely it's going to go back down. Because you had, you know, more force pushing up than you're ever going to have pushing back down, so it's, um, as far as the, the forces from the, you know, frosty, you've been pretty significant at times. How thick is the sidewalk? I'm assuming the four inch, right? Yeah, and we're only taking off just a small portion of it. We did some at the elementary in the past, and, and aesthetically, really, you can't notice the, uh, the difference. It, it just kind around. of blends, yeah. But it, it reduces that tripping hazard that you have. And this area, got to get my bearings right out here. We've got a, a few of the sidewalks that are uneven. And when people start coming in, occasionally you'll get people tripping there. Plus the, the walk along the uh, coming into the gym, uh, there are some areas there too. So. And the basically the final item on our agenda um, a day or two before our meeting with the new fire marshal and uh, fire marshal came in and, you know the previous fire marshal I guess retired so my my point is that it's not like we've been without state inspection from the fire marshals it's just we've got a different inspector now and the new inspector looks at things I guess that the other inspector maybe, I won't say overlooked, but didn't see an issue with. So the uh, fact of the matter is some, some if not all of these items have been um, unchanged for a long, long time. So it's not like our staff and students are in imminent danger of some catastrophic event. It's just We've got a difference of opinion now. I'm, I'm not um, downplaying any of the citations. I mean, if you go strictly by the letter of the law, then okay. We're, you know. But uh, the fact is, in, in one situation in particular, that is classroom doors, um, there's a conflict between um, what has become accepted security practice in, uh, in the event of school situations that have gone on over the last several years in various communities. And that's in conflict with state building codes with regard to fire aspects. Um, so, therefore, on the day of our meeting, all the doorstops were coming off the classroom doors. 
So at some point we have to make some decisions. There's a, there's a way to uh, get back to the situation where we're following our, our safety plan, but it's going to cost us money to do it. So we're going to have to mechanize with hold open closers and tie into the fire alarms and that's going to be pricey so it'll come down to kind of deciding which doors have a priority in, in that and stuff. But we haven't really gotten into any in-depth conversation in that aspect but it's something, you know, of course we're coming up on summer so we, something we're going to have to maybe just talk about before we get into the next school year. So Is that the state code? Yeah, if you, you know, I didn't look at the, the drawings from when the building renovations were done, but if the classroom wall, which I'm 99% you know, sure it is, uh, the corridor wall, if it's classified as a fire wall, then the, the doors are, you know, classified as fire doors. So, Theoretically, they're supposed to be uh, shut unless you have a hold open device that's tied into the fire alarm system. And therefore, if a smoke detector goes off, it releases the door closer and shuts the door and maintains integrity in the fire alarm. But like I say, that was in conflict with our safety plan that we developed with the, the sheriff's office and, and that other people in the school safety business, I guess, if you will, had been recommending that you do these days because like when I in John's office was another example where he had to take the, the closer off uh, or the hold open foothold open locked his door. So we're sitting in his office talking and because of the fact that you know the, the door is good at at uh, not transmitting sound, somebody could have been doing something significant in the outer office there around Cindy's desk and we would have been totally oblivious to it. So that's the, the logic of, you know, the classroom situation. Something could be going on in the building and, and a teacher in the classroom would be totally oblivious to it because she would, or she, he or she would not be aware it was even going on. But with the door open, you hear something going on, you got some time to make some decisions and react, you know, in the best interest of the, the uh, students. And I think in the case of my office, Charlene's office, you know, we don't open into a corridor. It opens into an office. It's not a, it, it is a fire door. But I think when they purchased the doors, when they built the original building, they just purchased all the doors away. Mm -hmm. And it has a closer on it. And because it has a closer on it, it can't be propped open. Because it's a fire door with a closer. The only way we can prop it open is if we get an architect to give us a statement that says it's okay to remove the closer. Um, but we can't just remove the closer and leave the door open. We have to have it closed. So it's just a different interpretation of the, the fire laws from this inspector as compared to others. So. And most of the, I think there was 19 different citations on the, the report, and I would say probably at this point at least 17, if not more, have already been addressed and corrected. As I understand it, I don't know that we have a date, but the fire marshal is coming back in, in two weeks. And if uh, any of you want to look it over, there's the, uh, the report. That's um, pretty much all I have. Oh, um, well, as far as the summer projects for the asphalt bun, actually, last Wednesday, John and I were going to take a walk and then it started pouring down rain and we just haven't got our schedules together since then to kind of determine the scope of work for asphalt repairs over the summer. So we'll try to get that uh, scheduled here as far as John and I determining the scope here in the next few days. The tarp on the south wall, Joe, is that, <coughs> is that ours? Is that parent who, who bought that? You know what? I that don't know that. Pardon? Is it, is, it is it cut in the field or is it just a really big tarp? I have no clue. It's a very big tarp. Well, I mean, my concern is, is that if you ever lay 
a plastic bag on grass in a day like today, that's dead grass. You're going to have a square infield in, by tomorrow. Um, you know, and I mean, I saw him putting on, I was watching from the track meet last night, I saw him putting on and I couldn't tell whether it's an arched tarp or whether they pulled it back off the grass or not because, you know, with these hot days, they're going to kill right. it. I should. I walked right by it when they were doing it. I don't recall it being out on the grass, but Clarence checked it this morning, so I'm sure if it was, he'd have probably pulled it back. But I, I can't tell you. I can't go out across the street tonight, didn't I? Yeah. yeah. And that's correct. The boosters did. Yeah, you'll see probably a donation. We're waiting for the final billing, and we'll just fill the boosters, and they'll donate back the money for that. So the boosters are paying for that. Softball. Does it have a chain on the edge? Does it have a chain on the edge? Anybody know? I mean, it was a huge tarp that someone pulled out. Yeah, I was just looking at the mass size of it rather than... <clears throat> then I had a little one running around that I to keep my eye on, too. Any other questions? Any other questions? <laughs> <laughs> that, hey, everybody had an opportunity to go out there and, and look at the dugouts at the softball field there. Nice, nice addition. They did fill those holes in there, the access, which is nice. Do you coming, like coming in on another? What's that? The. Uh, repair some potholes on the uh, access drive. That's what we're going to look at. Uh, you did, I don't know, somebody did some work. Yeah. Much appreciated. Easier on the car. With, with referring back to the dugouts, um, I don't know, they put new, they put new fence in front of the dugouts, did they not? Yes. Yes. I don't know that it, it's actually high enough to leave a gap. If a girl, some of these girls can hit a ball pretty hard, and you get a line drive, it's going to go straight for that dugout. There's no protection there. It's about two foot or so shy. But it's four foot fence, isn't it? Yeah. That was what we had specified. We'll have to look at it and see if you you specified eight foot. No, four foot in front of the dugouts. It was just a concern that I heard, you know, that I see it happening. Hope it doesn't happen. Yeah. <clears throat> it would be nice to put a 45 on the back. We talked about that. Before. We had talked about that. And at this point, we just didn't have the funds. Yeah, no, I mean, so, yeah. yeah, just extend the poles up just on the back. Okay, Mr. Warner, thank you. Um, Athletic Council, no report. Personnel, Mr. Von Ovel. No report. Finance audit, Dr. Miller. No report. Policy, Dr. Miller. No report. Communications, Mr. Weicker. No report, however, we're going to have one. We'd like to try to get one scheduled, if not next week, which is looking pretty dim right now with baccalaureate and senior awards and superintendent's advisory. Uh, so I'm not thinking it's going to happen next week. So it'll probably have to be the week after, which is after school's out. Mm -hmm. Insurance, Mr. Von Ovel. Um, tomorrow night at 6. Yeah, right. Meeting. Okay. Administrative reports, elementary, Mrs. Dangerfield. Mrs. Dangerfield is the elementary program. Oh, mm -hmm. that's right. Okay. And Mr. Richardson is was with Herman coming back from Columbus. They went in two cars. I'm not sure whether he's back yet or not. And if he is, he may be going home to get supper. I did look at Mrs. Dangerfield. I think her calendar is wrong. I think it lists the in service of the 30th, the last day is the 29th. We have two. We have an in-service day on the 30th, and oh, okay. then we have teacher checkout day on the 2nd. Gotcha. Okay, this is Dixon High School. Sometimes there's so much going on, you just don't know what to write. So if, if you look at that board report, and the, the agenda is very important. It has a lot of the uh, events for next week. Uh, we're starting off with the mini relay tomorrow in this thunderstorm. 
we've got Plan B. That's what school's all about, Plan B. So we're going to roll with Plan B. Uh, so we're going to have an indoor mini relay because I imagine it's supposed to rain most of the day. Um, Sunday will be our first annual cruise for a cure. Sammy Weikert has worked very hard along with some of his classmates to bring that to fruition, and I think it is going to happen under sunny skies. It's going to happen no matter what, but you know, he's done a really good job for that, and that we'll all be raising money for the American Cancer Society. There are our senior um, events. If you have any questions on those, make sure you let me know. Um, the last day for seniors will be Friday day after tomorrow. Take itself a little bit by surprise that it's happened so quickly. I think our spring was so cool that nobody quite realized that the end of school was this close. Mr. Uh, Miller and his staff have been collecting the computers and um, you know, they're having a hard time because some of the seniors are finishing up on projects and just um, aren't ready to be with you. I did find out about one of our seniors today. I, I got an email from uh, one of the teachers at the Career Center, and Alex Holsinger, who's on your strategic plan, I don't think you know this either, because I didn't know it either. He's a full-day Career Center student. He took first in the state in principles te of technology competition at um, Skills USA, so he's going to be going to national. So that is, that's a huge uh, undertaking. That's a big thing. So we're really I think proud Alex, Alex worked with Mr. Tucker for a while on some of the... Uh, he was on your committee during the strategic mm -hmm. plan. So I, I only see him when he's, well, you know, if you have a teenager anyway, it's kind of hard to get information out of them, and it doesn't matter if you're a parent or your principal. So I do see him leaving in the car, so I'm going to have to stop him and kind of congratulate him. And know uh, that we're really proud of it, because that is, the, that is a major undertaking. Uh, did you have any questions on him? Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Mr. Hill was at the uh, baseball game with Mr. Cusick. Um, there's just too many things going on tonight. Uh, Mr. Radman was fixing a sewer line break, or a sewer plug, rather. Um, so he's, if he's here, he ought to go home and shower. <laughs> <laughs> I am not sure if he's still here. <laughs> No, <laughs> no, you didn't want him here. When you, when you see him, when you see him, tell him we said thanks. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Mrs. Petticord. So that makes me Not much, just winding down is what we're doing. Um, Sophie and the kids, seniors, will be getting all of their money out of their accounts. Uh, we did some of that today. We'll be doing that again tomorrow. So whatever they have left in their accounts, it will be given and they'll sign it, showing that we reimburse them back you know, what they have left in their accounts. That will be going on tomorrow because they pretty much said they're not here Friday. I think they're doing um, a barbecue or something yep. out, out in the parking lot. So. <laughs> Anyhow, getting back, I, I thought I'd give you a total on our grandparents. There's been, there was a total of 533 grandparents this year. It went back, back up from last year. So I was excited about that. There was a lot more uh, grandma and grandpa special friends in, in this year, so um, that went up. Uh, we did the testing and feeding of um, all of the elementary and middle school. We did middle school different instead of going to classrooms, which we've done in the past. This year we took them, Mr. Richards had said, let's, let's take them from the gym after the regular students get done. Let's take them from the gym, split the cafeteria, and we'll put a grade in the middle and a grade in the high school. It worked wonderful. And I thank you, Linda, for letting us do that and use the cafeteria working with us for that. Because um, we got them through fast. They were back down and ready, fed and ready to go for their, for their testing, which I think, is, I think they need to start on a full belly. I think that helps. And, and they proved that it has. Um, I put in my last board in order uh, next week. We're done. We're done with Coke. Everything's winding down. Um, my commodities, they did a little bit something different this year. Um, I had a little bit of money left over. I never leave money. But what happened was um, they gave me a little bit of extra money in February. So they didn't give me enough time to order in. So I had like $1,000 left of my commodity entitlement. They allowed me this year, this is new for the state, 
to allocate that to like we use a lot of ketchup, we use a lot of meat. So they allowed me to take that money and say, okay, we'll let you spend that and allocate that to like Tyson, to the different uh, companies. So I did that for the first time this year. So I used up all of my money because I always use it. I usually go over, you know, and they have to tell me, you, you know, because it's important. That's money we need to use and it, it, and it helps. So, um, I don't know if that's something they're going to start from here or not, because the general rule is, if you don't use it, you lose it. So, I always use mine. But because they give me that little bit extra money. So, then he wrote to me, I know both of the gentlemen down at the state and said, Darling, would you be interested in? I, I said, absolutely. So, um, I did. So that's what I did. So this will be the first time this year for that. But I'm excited because it allowed me to use up, use up what I had, which was a thousand, a thousand, a thousand. You know, so I, I put it towards meat and the ketchup. There were just a few companies they allowed me to choose from, but it was. So they're going to give you credit? Is that it? Mm -hmm. Tyson and different, these different places? Yes, so, many credit. So, so many pounds of that meat I allocated to go of my money. So it, they charge you per pound. So you figure out how much you want to send to each one, and then it just takes it off of your um, entitlement dollars until you spend. So I spent. So I used it. I felt like I used it quietly. Um, the only other thing, and I'm sure you're here talking. I don't know if you've heard it in any of the meetings. Is you know the new target on the sodium again. Um, SNA, which is the School Nutrition Association, and I just want to put this back in your ear. If you get a chance, go out on the website. They're asking people to um, help support them. They're not asking um, that we stop what we're doing because they feel that the nutrition is important. But what they're asking is the congressmen to look at. This is going to be not only um, less that the kids are not going to buy, but also um, costly on the school system in the new community, in the program. So there's a great resource out there that explains all the um, areas that they're going to touch on and they're asking the congressman to ask the USDA to, let's not be so hard this year. Let's let them have the target of the sodium one. Let's give them time, you know, to um, the vendors and everybody get caught up and not be so strict on it. So whether or not that happens, that passes. Right now they're asking everybody to write to their congressman and give them their opinion on it. So that's what I'm asking you to do. If you would go out on the SMA, and I didn't even get to talk to John on that, but it, it's, it's, it's a good website um, just to look at. But I personally, as a nutrition, you know, they ask you, and I belong to the SMA. And, and it's a very, uh, I could sit here and read it to you, but I just got it today, the email. I just got it when I looked at my email here, and I thought, you know, I might mention it to you. But um, they, they have target, they, wanna, they want, the SNA wants to maintain the target one sodium limits and suspend the implications of further sodium reduction until scientific research supports, supports it. And what, it's, it's a nice article, and if you'd like, I, I can email it to all you guys, and attach it, and let you look at it. And if you feel like you support it, then maybe write the congressman, because that's what they're asking right now, because it's, a, you know, they're wanting to um, see if they would just give us a little bit more time to get ready for that, because it's going to be cost. So. Other than that, that's what um, they're working on for next year. And I don't have... One of the legislative items I didn't go over because it, it was kind of laborious, but uh, at any rate, the USDA has said it will make $78, $78 million available for investment in local and regional food systems, including food hubs, farmers markets, aggregation and processing facilities, distribution services, and other, lo other local food businesses. So maybe, maybe that will filter down to maybe some local businesses around here. You know, well, I'm thinking in terms of like and bakers, and I know we can't use yeah. that because of certain well, standards. But John and I did talk a little bit, and I'm going to um, I'm looking at the farm to school as an example, but I'm I'm going to approach some of the local farmers like Tulsa, Bantop, um, probably Dan Simmons, 
her up and put forth a letter saying, would you be interested in, you know, joining forces that I can buy off of you and be local and yet it's fresh. So, so it sounds like they're they're keying on local stuff. Mm -hmm. local they vendors. are, and I think the whole idea of going with local farm markets, you're, you're right about bakers, we'd love to, but right. they don't meet the qualifications on milk. Right. But, you know, as far as the local farm markets, for fresh fruit and vegetables, it would be great to be able to eat, buy locally and keep it right here in, in our school district. And I, I have one that now that has opened up, and, but um, I want to approach now. Some of them may not be able to keep up with the demand that I need. So that's why um, when things slow down, because it's been kind of crazy, um, there is a letter that I can use as an example to send to these guys to see if they'd be interested. So that's the starting point. So that is the problem. So. Any other questions? Yeah, read that right on May 16th is the last day for the lunch charges for the district. Yes. All the charges have to be uh, paid up for the kids in their accounts. You know, they can't be sewing anything. Right. They can't be in a negative fashion. So we allow them. It takes us about two weeks to get all those charges in. Um, as a district, that's just something we've always done. And, and, um, what do you do with the remaining two weeks that's coming? Well, most of them will have money in their accounts that will carry them to okay. that two weeks. So that's, that's what we have. Right yeah. Okay. They can't go into the bank. And then if they do, mm -hmm. then they don't, their report cards are out this usually until that's paid out. It's, it's a really great system and it's worked for us. Um, Charlene can tell you if we, there's not hardly any outstanding. My cashiers do an excellent job um, and we try to do that as well. So it's worked. I got a question. I hope I can answer. Um, <clears throat> they pay for it on yes. the web. Yes. What is the ID number? Because it's not your account number. No, it's, a, it's their students. Like the, you did on their, correct me right, is it on the same number as they're getting on parent assist or their student ID number on their report cards? It's usually going to say I did the same sign up. It's not their parent assist number. Where it's their state assigned ID it should number. should be on their report card or call the building secretary. Yeah. Well, parent assist, that number that's associated with the main yeah. That's your student ID. Okay. I thought you Because the Millers generally do things at the 11th hour, so, you know, <laughs> when we find out at 718, you know, that nobody has money in their account, and, you know, I'm gone for the day, and they have the checkbook, yeah. and, you it know, try to add it, and it's yeah. like, well, you're out of luck. Okay. <laughs> building secretaries, and then if you think it'll hold it down, I'd be glad to look that up for you also. I need to see one login in the title. Yeah, it's nice. Once you do it, you get it set up. Any other questions? Or you can text the guy and he'll send you the message. That is an awesome, isn't it? It worked today. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you. This is Dangerfield. Would you would you like to give your report? Um. <laughs> that, that's fine. But I can just uh, informally um, tell you that um, the big thing we did in the last month is the third grade and the fourth grade took the achievement test and we're done with our makeups and we sent those into the state and we're keeping our fingers crossed that they all come back a pass on the test. Um, especially our third graders are really looking forward to their results. Um, because anyone who didn't pass that third grade reading section is going to give, be given that opportunity to take the test again. Um, thanks, Mrs. Pettiford. And we're looking forward to June 10th. That's our kindergarten um, screening and registration day officially. We have 84 people pre-registered already, new kindergartners, and that's a real healthy number. I counted a few days ago, 29 of those are open enrollment applications. So I thought that was an interesting piece of information. Um, our students are getting excited about summer vacation coming. I think our teachers are too. Our fourth graders are really looking forward to becoming fifth graders and we're getting ready for that transition. Our fourth graders are going to go next week and visit the middle school and see what that's like. So.
that's pretty much all I had if you had any questions. Um, the kindergarten and career day. Oh, that was so nice. Yes, uh, that was a few day, a few weeks ago now. Was it two or just one? Oh, Boy, uh, we had a lot of community members come in. Our kindergarten teachers planned it. Um, it was really a hands-on learning activity um, about different careers that are out there, and, and a lot of community members came in and did lots of things. Mr. Garwood was one of them. He shared agriculture and uh, Dr. Miller was another. He was letting kids hear their heartbeats, um, showing them how stethoscopes worked. It was a, a nice thing. I think they're going to do it again in the future. That was uh, two hours, 110 students, and I think that was the first time that I went two hours without breathing. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, they were so excited about it. They enjoyed it. it was, they were uh, very well behaved. Mm -hmm. um, you know, hats off to the teachers there. I went home and told Linda, I said, yeah, you know, I don't know if I can handle that. <laughs> the best part of Kindergarten Career Day, though, was that they, you inspired a young man to ride a bus. <laughs> this one, uh, yeah, we won't name names, but there was a kindergartner. Now, it's May. He's been getting a ride home with his mother all year long, every day. And he got so into what he got in his goodie bag and what he got from career day, he was talking to his friends about it. He walked right up to the bus line and walked right onto the bus. And, and one of the bus drivers saw him and said, I don't think I recognize this one. And, so, and his mother was patiently waiting for him. And, so. <laughs> yeah, they were, they were really into it. It was exciting. Well, it was, it was very well organized, uh -huh. and, and um, you know, coming from um, you know the, the career center and, and what I want to teach, it was it was certainly nice to come in there and, and show those students a little bit about what we do. Mrs. Campbell really directed the um, presenters as far as you know having them put it on the level of a five-year-old, and and you know ask them to bring hands-on things. Uh, there was a contractor; they were hammering nails into pieces of wood and things like that. Really good and geared toward the kids. So. Very good, thank you. Any questions? I don't have a question. I have a comment, though. Um, track and field day was was really cool. The weather cooperated. It was yes. beautiful, and everybody was it was nice. Yes, thank you. And yesterday we had the art show. Um, lots of people attended that too. Things have been running smoothly. Now we're just waiting on those test results. So. And how did how did this evening go? Wonderful. The third graders did a great job in their musical show. Does anybody have a third grader? No. <laughs> Very good. Thank you. Mr. Miller. Uh, as you hear, is, um, you know, every time this time of year when the building presents, I mean, everything they talk about is involved in technology. Um, I was fortunate enough to just Monday and Tuesday here, I went up to uh, Sandusky and went to a Google seminar. And um, when we're talking about, you know, peer review, peer, you know, with our teachers being able to be across the board to see a paper that's written, you know, this is going to be a lot more easy, um, a lot easier now with the Google, um, what they call GAF, Google Apps for Education. Because now it allows a student to write a paper, every teacher can see it, mark it, revisions, and the, and the revision history stays with it from day one, so you can see it just... Everything we're heading towards is what we're already had put in place. So it's, it's really reassuring when we I hear my staff talking, and you know they're saying stuff that they're doing that you know it's got to fit right right in place with what we're laying in line also in technology. So it's uh, it's uh, always reassuring when you come back from something like that and hear things that are falling into place. Um, and then we also have to remind ourselves this is only year two of our one to one and how far we've already adopted it. When we're going around and trying to get get these computers, you know, last year students were like you know. Almost here, you know, take this back. And this year, we have students, man, thanks. I don't know what, you know, I don't know what I'd do without this. You know, we're getting much more complimentary um, remarks as we're grabbing them back from students this year. Last year was a little more, you know, it was something different, new, you know, a little more resistant. So it's linked also to see how our students are adopting to our, you know, our rollouts of stuff. Um, you know, this time of year, just, it's um, trying to be in 20 places at once. Uh, you know, we have the, the Performing Arts Center is just jammed solid since March, it seems like that way. 
Um, this third grade musical, that was, she, that was quite the production she put on. It's always fun to set up and watch these kids, uh, you know, work around our wires and everything else. And that performing arts center, we were booked out there with a uh, all school. I think they presented today, and then also in here we had the high school choir showing to our eighth graders. So you know they tried to book out there, but they were forced back into here. It's just there's something going on in every nook and corner of the building this time of year, and we're trying to slowly get things wound down so we can start gearing up for next year. Major project for the summer? Oh yeah, um, one getting all the you know the one to one back in, get it revamped for next year. We're also adding 90 um, computers down at the elementary. Uh, so it's basically three carts of 30. And then we also you know, got the new netbook carts in the middle school. You know, we had to basically touch. We did a uh, computer count today. We're at about 1,100 devices that we're going to have to touch this summer to you know, revamp, re-ghost, re-image, and get, make sure all the security updates are in place. And we have to make sure that we have all XP machines out of the district um, this summer because um, that's officially on the, off of Microsoft's support list. And, what happens now is if you get a, you know, you're just, you don't have the security in place, so we have to make sure that we have every machine at least running Windows 7 or better. So yeah, lots to do, <laughs> as usual. Never a lack. Any other questions? Thank you. I appreciate it. Then I'll be presenting next month with uh, some of the other stuff that we're uh, holding back. Thank you. Okay, we'll move into the superintendent's report. Well, just as Daryl finished telling you, next month we'll be hearing a presentation from technology. So we'll be starting at 6.30 again next month, and we'll have a presentation from uh, Daryl and his team. I um, wanted to share with you that Linda Dixon and I attended an advanced ed preparation meeting uh, in Columbus recently. Uh, next year we're due for reaccreditation. Uh, so we'll be having an on-site review. Um, Advance Ed, I think, is, it continues to be a very good process for us. It looks at our strategic plan, our building improvement teams, and it brings it all together. And uh, Linda recently had the opportunity to do a uh, on-site review for a school in Michigan near Detroit. So she had first-hand experience of being a part of an on-site review team. So I think that will help us as we prepare for our own review. Um, and speaking of Linda, I also wanted to congratulate her. I think I sent out the information that U.S. News and World Report has identified Crestview as a bronze award. Uh, that's based on college readiness. That's Crestview High School. Um, it's based on the number of students who are enrolled and participating in AP courses and uh, dual credit and in early college entrance and how successful they are. And, uh, you know, it, it, we've come a long way in a short time. When Dan Simmons was on the board and his daughter was a senior, she was the only student that we had that took an AP test. So in that short period of time, do you want to tell me again the number of students that are enrolled in AP courses and just AP courses? Let's just stay with that. Enrolled and taking the test both. Um, right now we have, um, this year we probably have 60 to 70 students that are enrolled. That number will be very similar to that next year. And how many are taking, have taken the test? I know some of we have are. one tomorrow. We had uh, two tests last week. So overall we'll, we will have about 50 tests taken. There, and you know, the fee is um, $83 per student. So you know, the families are seeing the value in that. Um, if a student scores three or higher on an AP exam, that is um, a guaranteed credit four and five or a guaranteed credit at any national, nationwide of any college and university. So we're pretty excited about, first of all, the recognition. Secondly, I think that it shows, number one, uh, the, the dedication of our staff as we move forward. And I think Race to the Top is another part of that. You know, we've, we've built a round Race to the Top with the high school to higher ed alignment and AP courses, and trying to encourage students to uh, uh, invest in their future by taking more challenging curriculum as they move forward. And I think our student board member is one example of that. So um, congratulations to Preston as he prepares. Now he tells you that he's anxious to get out, but you know, I think Preston is going to miss 
our board and, and being a part of this organization. So, I think that's all I have, Mr. Garwood. I think most of the other things we've already talked about. So, you want me to move right in? Move right in, please. Item number one, I'd like to request the board accept the resignation of Ron Milliron, Transportation uh, <coughs> Supervisor Mechanic, effective at the end of the 2013-14 contract year. Uh, that would be June 30th, 2014. Is there a motion to accept? So moved. Second. Second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, we'll proceed to vote. Um, Charlene. Miller? Yes. Tucker? Yes. Bonnacle? Yes. Weicker? Yes. Carver? Yes. Item number two, I'd like to request the board approve the purchase of one new school bus from Canton Truck Sales at the price established by the Elmarisa Bus Bid Purchasing Program. So moved. Second. Second. There's no change in pricing. That's the same. They extended the pricing to, I think maybe Ken alluded to it in his report, but it's the same price that we already paid for the bus that was the was delivered today. That's correct. And that's just as Mr. Volnoco reported in his report. Very good. Any further discussion? We shall proceed to vote. Charlene? Tucker? Yes. Weikert? Yes. Miller? Yes. Volnoco? Yes. Garland? Yes. Item number three, I'd like to request the board adopt the following resolution regarding the retirement resignation of Marge Gaskell, CHS CMS Cook, effective May 31st, 2014. And I'm not going to read the resolution, but what it does is it establishes that the board would consider March for uh, retirement rehire. And we will have the public hearing on July 14th, 2014 in the Performing Arts Center. Is there a motion to accept? So moved. Second? Second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, we shall proceed to vote. Charlene. Miller? Yes. Yes. Tucker? Yes. Wayne? Yes. 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 Item number four, I'd like to request the board adopt the resolution proclaiming the week of May 5th through the 9th, 2014 as Teacher Appreciation Week. So moved. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, we shall proceed to vote. Charlene, please. Bonnagle? Yes. Weikert? Yes. Tucker? Yes. Miller? Yes. Yes. Item number five, I'd like to request the board adopt the resolution uh, proclaiming uh, the week of May 5th through 9th as School Nutrition Employee Week. Is there a motion? So moved. Second? Second. Any further discussion? I think in regards to both of these, we, you know, we've talked often about how great our staff is and how, uh, as you've heard Herman say tonight, we've got a good uh, rapport with both groups and I think we strive to keep that. So it's nice to be able to congratulate them uh, and thank them for a, an excellent job each year for all that they do for our students. Any further discussion? Hearing none, we shall proceed to vote. Charlene, please. Miller? Yes. Yes. Tucker? Yes. Weikert? Yes. Yes. <coughs> Item number six, I'd like to request the board uh, approve the members of the class of 2014 to be granted their high school diplomas on May 25, 2014, provided they have satisfactorily completed their courses of study as prescribed by the State of Ohio and the Crestview Local Board of Education. And you can read the list there. I think that you might recognize Preston's name. I think there's a Samuel Weikert that might be a relative. Uh, so uh, it's very nice to be able to bring this group of students to you. It's been a good group. So moved. Is there a motion? Is there a second? Second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, we shall proceed to vote. Charlene, please. Miller? Yes. Bonneville? Yes. Tucker? Yes. Weikert? Yes. Yes. And Mr. Garwood, if you'll strengthen your hand, I think that you'll need it for shaking hands as they go across the stage next Sunday. Yeah, I, think I, I think Mr. Weikert will want to present to Samuel uh, sure. and maybe Mr. Volnoggle to Mr. Spaney. Okay, very good. And uh, Mrs. Dixon, con congratulations uh, for what Mr. Delling has just spoke to us about as far as the bronze. Um, 
I mean, you had the bronze, you know, the junior staff, the bronze this year, and the students. What about next year? For our graduating silver. Yeah, for the for the bronze for. Oh, oh gosh, yeah, uh, we're gonna be silver. Silver. <laughs> That's what we're after. Okay. With that being said, the board. Um, I uh, need a motion to board to move to executive session for the purpose of interviewing student candidates for student representation on the Board of Education. And I would like to request that we include Preston in that, that interview if we could. Absolutely. So moved. Is there a second? Second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, we shall proceed to vote. Charlene, please. Tucker? Yes. Weiker? Yes. Bonhoeffel? Yes. Miller? Yes. Arwood? Yes. And there will be no further action. And there will be no further action.